Welcome to Compassion Speaks. Today on our show, we have Claire Thomas from Sholo Historical Museum. Welcome, Claire. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You bet. Mm -hmm. So I understand that mm -hmm. you've done this before. This isn't your first rodeo. <laughs> well, yes, that's right. This isn't. <laughs> I was here uh, a few years ago. Shasta was the hostess. Yeah. We had a, a wonderful interview and Good. got the word about the museum out on, on public TV. And we always appreciate the advertising that we can get through yeah. city TV. You bet. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's been a few changes since that time. Well, we probably have... Um, created more exhibits. Okay. Um, as I tell Carol, my assistant director, sometimes my madness in creating, um, it, it just overflows. But it's all good. I um, So I'll tell you a little bit about our museum. Okay. Um, first and foremost, we are celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. Wonderful. And uh, we will reopen tomorrow on okay. Wednesday. So our hours are Wednesday through Saturday, 10 to 3. With that being said, um, we are in compliance with the, the recent um, COVID-19 virus. We're in compliance with, with all of those requirements. Mm -hmm. So we invite our guests to come in and enjoy the history we have there. So we have 17 separate themed rooms. Wow. And as you know, Ezra, your mother and father have a room there. Yeah. The Borrego, <laughs> the Borrego the kitchen. kitchen. Yes. Yes. And um, actually, that's one of my favorite rooms to teach when the children come oh. for Heritage Day. Because in this day and age, they pop things in the microwave or the toaster oven. They have no idea that they have to go out and chop the wood to put in your mother's wood stove. Right and then go gather the eggs from the chickens so that they can have scrambled eggs for breakfast. Right, right. <laughs> and by the time I get that part and say, oh, you want some milk? Well, then you have to go to the barn and milk the cow <laughs> and bring it back. <laughs> and their little eyes are just like, oh my gosh, we had no idea. So yes. it, it's, a, it's a very fun room to teach it in. Is. So, um, There's a lot of neat rooms in there. Uh, do you still have the Eb Lewis room in there? Oh, most definitely. He is one of my favorite people. Yes. I remember during the parades, he would go down down the parade. He never knew what he was going to do each year, and he always had a surprise for everybody. I know. We all, <laughs> didn't we all wait? Yeah, Just wait. Uh, yeah. So anxious for that. Um, we do have... The washing machine, if you remember yes, the washing pop, machine. Pop out yeah. every once in a while. Just like a jack in the box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I so vividly recall um, watching him in the parade and thinking, how can he see? How does he know where he's going? Yes. And it wasn't until I became the director at the museum that I had an opportunity to look at the washing machine and he had drilled um, holes, a tiny, tiny row of holes where he, where he could see out, <laughs> but it wouldn't be visible to the, the parade yeah. viewers. So yes, oh, I miss fun. Eb terribly. Um, actually, I just had a good visit with a gentleman that worked for him for years and years and years. and. Uh, we could do a whole segment on Eb Lewis. Oh, good. <laughs> now his place was used to be right close to there, wasn't it? Cash and Carry. Yes, Cash right, and Carry. Right there, mm -hmm. wasn't it? It. Um, let me see. The store sat between um, Loft Green's uh, photography and yes. the old. Um, Real estate building. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 And it was a fabulous building. <laughs> oh my gosh. You could go and spend hours. That was like a museum. That was our museum oh, before we had so a museum. <laughs> it was so fun going in there. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big train lover. I love trains. Mm -hmm. And I, my nickname was Choo Choo growing up. Oh, okay. From, for different reasons, not besides like trains, but mm -hmm. it's, you have a big. Do uh, you have two different train sets in there, or is it one big one? I it's, can't it's one large one. Okay. Um, the museum has a, a gentleman's partnership with the Silver Creek Railroaders Club, and they uh, came on site in 2008, and so they occupy the... Um, the old courtroom because that used to be Navajo County Justice Court yep. there and um, so when that was relocated then the train club 
uh, came in and they started building. And oh my goodness, have they built. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe they have six different trains that they can run at one time. Wow. And so uh, it began with um, the last train to Maverick. And those of us that have been here for a while know that Maverick was a logging town. Yep. So Maverick, McNary, and then it kind of spilled over into Route 66 mm -hmm. in uh, Holbrook and Winslow. Yeah. And um, it's just a beautiful layout. They, they do all their own work. They make all the rocks, all the trees, um, create all of the, the grounds and, and the miniature cars. It's an HO scale, so it's, right. it's very small. Yeah. But, um, and then we had the privilege of having our artist, um, Steve Taylor, he uh, painted the walls, the murals. Oh, wow. And um, some of those are my favorite because the scenes that the railroaders uh, have, then Steve took that and um, created a scene um, as if the trains or the cattle or um, the cars were coming right out of the wall. Wow. How neat. Mm. That is a man, and there's a little boy in every man. And when a, a man or women that love trains mm -hmm. or love the history of what those trains represent, just it brings you back to your childhood or it makes you feel young again when you're in there seeing all that go and it is so cool. Absolutely. And and the gentlemen that work on that, they are sometimes I'll take a peek in there and they're either just huddled together just like little boys. It's like, oh, well, let's move this train here and yeah. that engine there. And they are, they're so excited about what they do. And that spills over to our guests. Yeah. And our guests really love, love the trains. And so, um, in, in speaking of the trains, the train room will be open uh, yeah. to our, our visitors. It won't be as... Um, active at first because we're just unsure but we will have an engineer on site and um, an engineer in the workroom if uh, people have questions about how they build things or whatnot so how fun now there's a, a lot of other things you talked about that's in there you said how many different exhibits was it we have 17, 17? Uh, okay. separate themed rooms okay um, and then in addition to that we have our hallways that, of course, I have to just fill up. <laughs> My, the, the latest uh, exhibit that I've been working on is um, the education hall. And that will include history of all of our schools here on the mountain, oh, uh, wow. beginning with the Snowflake Academy. Yeah. And okay. that, uh, that original academy was built, it was a massive, beautiful building. And um, it only lasted three years and then it burnt to the ground. <laughs> wow, do you have a history date when that took place? Yes, um, 19, I believe it's 1910. That's a long right, 1910. time ago. Wow. So, um, but you know, our communities are fighters and um, they cleaned it up and they rebuilt. Um, and the um, the building that sits where the academy was in Snowflake is still standing, and they still use it at the Snowflake High. Of course, I'll talk about or a display about how Sholo did not have a high school for right. years and years. Right. Um, most all of the children in Sholo and. Heber, Overgaard, Clay Springs. We were bused to Snowflake to go to high school. Yeah. Um, my graduating class in 1974 was the last graduating class from Sholo to be bused okay. over there. So I want to highlight that. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. just not like, oh, you know, we can walk to high school. Right. No, we can do that. Um, so I, I'll talk about that or display that, uh, of course, our, our elementary schools uh, and some of our teachers, namely Mrs. Frost and Mrs. Bushman. <laughs> Charlie Whipple is our, our school superintendent. Oh, wow. Um, we just have a lot of information on all of those families. And, and then um, we'll move up the hill to Pine Top Lakeside and 
we'll see where it goes from there. And that's pretty <laughs> neat. So there's other highlight um, rooms in there. Tell me some of, some of the other favorite rooms that you have that people would look forward to going and seeing. Um, another favorite room mm -hmm. of the children, okay. it, and, and I re we try to capture as many of the children as we possibly can, you know, with history, because um, sometimes they get very bored at looking yeah. at pictures, <laughs> and they certainly don't want to read everything right. that's on the walls. So the jail room is another favorite of the children. And so the, um, I'll talk a little bit about that side of the building, uh, the West Wing, was originally a sporting goods store built by Mary and Bill Sexton in 1960. Then the police department, um, the city of Sholo and the police department then bought that from the Sextons and that's when they put in the separate rooms okay. that are there now. The city was down one hallway, the police department was down the other. So, you know, you look at our facilities now and think that they were all in that one <laughs> little room in that building. But they, um, the police department built a holding cell and it's in the, in the very back of the building um, to house, um, I hate to call them prisoners, but yeah. people that maybe got a little rowdy on yeah. a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not some so good choices. <laughs> um, so yeah. when the police department uh, relocated into their mm -hmm first new building, then the museum was able to take that side of the building over in 95, 94, and then we opened in 95. But the children loved the jail because we left it. We left it just intact, that's wow. the way it was. Wow. I mean, we have a lot of memorabilia on the walls. Um, we have a wonderful um, exhibit honoring Officer Reed, um, as well as our past uh, police um, Chiefs of police and officers, but back to the children. They uh, again, it's a favorite room because I explained to them that if they did get in trouble and they were brought in, that they would be um, handcuffed <laughs> and that they would be fingerprinted. And we have the actual fingerprint board and yeah. all of that. And then that they would be handcuffed to the bench and then eventually get in the cell and. And so they think it's so cool to go into the cell yeah. because there's three beds, but when you close the door, it's not so fun. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Reality starts setting in on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can't go nowhere. Mm -hmm. How fun. Do you have a, we're going to be taking a break in just a little bit. When we come back, tell me a little bit about if, you know, if you have anything on the history of the Deuce or how it was named, uh, history of Sholo there, any, any stuff like that. Okay. And any other things that might stand out of, for the White Mountains that uh, we can talk about. So Absolutely. Okay. That would be awesome. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Today on my show, we have Claire Thomas representing the uh, Shola Museum. And we talked about a few of the things that you have in there and some of the highlights of the good old railroad and the halls for the kids and the jailhouse and, and good old uh, Mel, uh, uh, Lamel Lewis. Mm -hmm. um, just that I, I've been in that museum a few times not only to be able to see my mom's and dad's room with the Brego kitchen but there's so much fun stuff in there I love history I love especially because I'm a native here you know I right. want to know about more about my hometown and the White Mountains and stuff um, I just and when on our break we're talking about certain other things about the history of Sholo um, if, it, if you guys have other stuff in there but there was a a lot of people don't know about this clinic that was where NPC is now that was called Joseph Ingo Water Hospital. Do you have a little bit of stuff in there about that? We do. We s most certainly do. Um, as I shared earlier, Sholo did not have a hospital for many years. So if you were going to be born, you either had to go to Snowflake to the birthing house or uh, to McNary, mm -hmm. to the McNary General um, Hospital, or be born at home. The Josephine Goldwater Hospital was an undertaking that uh, began in the mid to late 50s. And this community band together um, to make that happen. The reason it has the name Josephine Goldwater 
is after Senator Barry Goldwater's mother. That's okay. That's I didn't know for that for sure. I thought it was his wife. We'd go back and forth with mom. So it is his mom. It is his okay. mother. And uh, Mrs. Goldwater was uh, quite a adventurous pioneer woman. She came from back east all by herself at a young age, traveled on the rail uh, all the way into Phoenix and perhaps California. I, I think maybe she was going to California, but I'm not real sure about that. But we have the history there in the Shola Business Room about the hospital. And so the, um, well, I'm not sure if it's the administration building now, but the, the hospital is Room or building is still intact. Yeah. I know that the college plans to do some upgrading, and I certainly hope that they keep <laughs> the integrity of that particular yeah. building as yeah. it was. So. Yeah, it's on the left of the campus. Is that correct? The older building, because it's you have all the new yes. buildings, and yes. this one's down yes. lower on the mm -hmm. on the left. Yeah. 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 So, so um, we uh, as a community and the White Mountains actually, we were so excited to have a hospital, you know, because Sholo is the hub of uh, many communities. You either have to, if you're coming in from Clay Springs, Linden, Burton, well, you have to come into Sholo. Same for St. John's, Springerville, you have to come to Sholo before you can go to Pine Top Lakeside or go to Taylor Snowflake Shumway. Yeah. So it's all, it's we are really the hub and, uh, so, you know, and that served um, our community very well in growth because of our outlying communities. But at the museum, I try my best to incorporate and blend the other communities with the history of, of Sholo and the White Mountains because you can't have one without the other. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that Cora Dawn Cooley and Marion Clark felt that same way when they um, established their ranch here in the Sholo area in, in 1870. Wow. And uh, Cora Dawn Cooley came from back east from Virginia. Um, he had just uh, gotten out of the Civil War and decided he wanted to come west and look for gold with Doc Thorne. So they began to come west, um, got into New Mexico, stayed for a while in Texas for a while, and, and then on here to Arizona, of course, territory. And um, when he when they got here, they couldn't believe how beautiful it was. You know, the the creek or the stream that they called it, running with um, grass, you know, knee high, <laughs> and they just couldn't believe it. So, um, he uh, Marion Clark was already established here in Sholo. He he was here first, but not by by very long. So, uh, Corridon and Cooley. Corey Don Cooley and Marion Clark formed a partnership on a 110,000 acre ranch. Wow. So that encompasses a great deal of the White Mountains if you think wow. about acreage. Yeah. So they formed that partnership um, with the main camp here in Sholo. Actually, um, right where we sit, the um, LDS church is, is nearby. That's where Corey Don Cooley's they called it the White House. It was a beautiful, beautiful, large uh, two-story building home. And that's where his home sat, was where the downtown chapel is at. So the, where we're sitting right now, we're sitting on history. <laughs> um, wow. Corridon uh, quickly realized that his service uh, experience would serve him well. And he joined the ranks uh, in White River during the uh, the Geronimo campaign as a scout. With that being said, that left Marion Clark to tend this ranch, and that was a large undertaking for one person because wow. uh, Mr. Cooley was gone a great deal. Um, so they, um, but in in the meantime, Cordon Cooley fell in love with the Apache people, White Mountain Apache people. And he actually fell in love with a younger daughter of Chief Pedro's and had asked Chief Pedro uh, for her hand in marriage. And Chief Pedro said, well, in our tradition, the oldest daughter has to marry first. 
I don't know for sure, but this is how I tell the story. I just say, well, Cora Dawn said, I'll marry both of them in. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it was. Um, we do not have legal documentation that, that um, he married two sisters, but they certainly all lived together as yeah. one family. Yeah, wow. And um, then a few years <clears throat> passed by, and Marion Clark and uh, Cordon Cooley decided that they didn't want to be partners anymore. So they were going to play this famed card game called 7-Up. And as the legend goes, or history, <laughs> <laughs> it's up to the listener who chooses that. Yeah. Um, they played a card game, and at the very end, Marion Clark was noted as saying, show the low card and you take the ranch. Well, Corydon Cooley turned over the deuce of clubs, and that is the lowest uh, card in, in the deck. And he said, show low it is. Wow. And that's how so, the, that's the term cool. and the name of this city came, show low. Before, it was Cooley's Ranch. So. Interesting. So the Adairs were here also, and wasn't there a, a town called Adair? Or? Yes. Okay. Yes, indeed. Um, the um, Mormon migration began about 1878 to 1880, quite prolifically. Uh, Brigham Young um, had called a group to come into this area and settle. So they did, and they because the this ranch property was already um, being utilized by Cooley and Clark, they chose an area where Fool Hollow Lake is at okay. now. Yeah. And in the beginning, that was called Adair. And so there were about 25 families that, that came and lived out there. And they sustained life in the Adair community for over 20 years. And if anyone knows of that area, I'm not sure how they did it. Um, because there was, there was no sustainable water, mm. um, not in the beginning. They had to haul their water from the creek. And, you know, in modern day, we think nothing of jumping in our car and driving to right. Full Hollow Lake. Yeah. But back in that time, it was all horse and wagon, and they have to, you know, come in and haul their water from this downtown creek back to their community. Um, there was eventually a well that was witched and dug by hand uh, so that they had water, but it was a difficult area to grow crops. Um, because of it's, it sits in a bowl, and so you have uh, late freezings in the spring. So that was difficult. They were plagued with many horrific diseases, uh, smallpox and diphtheria, um, influenza, uh, so much so that they built a smallpox house. Wow. And those that were afflicted with that disease had to go there and then eventually would pass, and they're um, th they have a community uh, cemetery which yeah. sits on private land at yeah. this time. I've but been. now it's full hollow lake. <laughs> yeah, wow. So my wife, Tenny, she's a, her father was a Nicholas. So Leela Nicholas is her grandpa. Oh, okay. And so Nick's Market, is there anything in there about Nick's Market? Oh, of course, oh, of okay. course there is. Again, back to the Sholo Business Room. Um, we have pictures and uh, the, the written history about Nick's Market when it was on the Deuce of Clubs, mm -hmm. uh, where a lot of people remember where Pat's Place was at. Yep. Well, a major part of that restaurant was the original Nick's Market. Across the street was Nick's Variety Store, yep. and um, Leland and Betty pretty mm -hmm. much ran, ran that store. Yep. Yeah. And so. when they combined, when it was over, uh, pretty much almost where the discount tire is. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. They had the two, or the one big store. They had all the food and all the meat one side, uh, and the other side was a variety store. And then they had a little sporting goods store upstairs. Yes, they that? did. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So. That was a place to go to. Well, that was our. Um, our first shopping mall, I guess yeah. you could say. <laughs> yeah. 
But yes, we have uh, a lot of history, and I must say at this point in time, dear Elizabeth Nicholas, Oh, she was this area's finest historian. We have a lot of fine ones, but she kept records of everything. And when she passed, her children generously shared a lot of her <coughs> history scrapbooks, yeah. <coughs> pardon me, with us. Oh, cool. And we have them in our library. We have oh, a research wow. library at the museum where people can come in and do research if they wish. Yeah, and their house still exists just down the road. It's the greenhouse on the corner down there. Mm -hmm. And, they, and uh, he talked about, Leland would share that when the first airplane came into Sholo, he got to go see it oh. at the airport. <laughs> and there was a lot of cool history that they talked about. Yeah, uh, a lot of firsts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been mm -hmm. a joy having you here, Claire. And uh, I can't wait to go back in the museum again and, and see some of the new changes with your creativity that you were able to bring to the museum. Well, and we look forward to seeing you and anyone else that would wish to come in. Well, thank you. Make sure you get out and serve our community. Tune in next month to see Compassion Speaks. Thanks again for joining us.